Hey guys, I'm your host, Wire Ruler of Time. Welcome to Red Right to Left. Today we're going to be looking at a manga that covers a very important subject, love. Love supposedly conquers all, and in particular, romantic love is an extremely powerful force. I mean, it can make people do amazing, wonderful, extreme, desperate, stupid things. Why else, but for love, would we buy $5 greeting cards every February the 14th, or take dancing lessons, or move across the ocean and pretend to be a member of the opposite sex, or... What? Strange as it may sound, that last one is the premise behind Hanakimi, a manga by Nakajo Hisaya whom I just want to punch in the face after having read through the where some piece of crap. If you're trying to find any meaning in that title, don't bother. Hanakimi is a fan abbreviation of the Japanese title for the manga, Hana Zakari no Kimi Tachi E. Translated literally, this means for you in full blossom. I've decided to go with the English title by process of elimination, since the full Japanese title makes my tongue try to commit suicide, and saying the translated title makes others question my sexuality. The manga in a nutshell is about Ashia Mizuki, a Japanese-American girl who moves to Japan so that she can attend the same high school as her idol, a high jumper named Sano Izumi. The catch is that Sano attends an all-boys high school, so Mizuki cuts her hair and pretends to be a guy to get in. Apparently nobody checks her passport because then we wouldn't have a plot. You know, this sounds a lot like that one weird Amanda Bynes movie about soccer. Shit, if I'm thinking about that already, this is gonna be hell. By the way, Nakajo Hisai has written a few other series, including one called Sugar Princess about an amateur figure skater. Which sounds like the basis of that one Disney movie with Michelle Trachtenberg in it. So this woman's written two series reminiscent of movies starring former TV child actresses. So I haven't even started reading it yet, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to go through this entire manga with the Amanda Show theme song stuck in my head and wondering when Dawn's going to be kidnapped. Not that I'm familiar with the Amanda Show or Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The manga opens with a scene of Mizuki cutting her hair, and for some reason Nakajo thought the best way to make sure the readers know she's a girl was for her to be in her underwear. I'll admit, though, while the method is blunt, I'm grateful for this prologue, because otherwise it's really difficult to tell which of the students is Mizuki. Apparently a requirement for getting into the school is to be androgynous as hell. Now, I'd like to talk about Mizuki's name a bit. You may recall from my last two reviews, about Naruto and Prince of Tennis, that each series featured a character named Mizuki. While quite effeminate, they were both certainly male. Mizuki is one of those names that can be for people of either gender, like Francis or Michael Jackson. My point is, even while pretending to be a guy, Mizuki can use her real name, which is really damn lucky for her because I'm pretty sure that she lacks the brainpower and foresight to come up with a fake one. Okay, so Mizuki heads to Osaka High School, dressed up in a uniform that actually does hide her gender fairly well. It doesn't take long for her to run into Sano, quite literally, and she goes through an internal monologue to explain why she's stalking him. About three years before the start of the manga, Mizuki saw Sano competing in a high jump competition on TV. She thought he looked beautiful when he jumped, and the rest is stalker history. Now this is one of the first instances that Nakajo uses flower imagery to illustrate Mizuki's view of Sano. I guess she thinks that track stars smell like lilacs or something. The significance of Mizuki's idolization is that Sano's performance inspired her to basically be all she could be, and she started liking herself. The reason she came to Japan was just so that she could see Sano do the high jump in person. Because going to high school isn't about coming of age or taking on new responsibilities or getting an education or making friends that you can trust with anything. It's about being near a guy you've never met before. <laughs> Women. Anyway, Mizuki immediately tries to make friends with Sano, but because she's so straightforward, she's instead briefly mistaken for being homosexual. A straight girl masquerading as a boy being mistaken for homosexual? That's brilliant! Nakajo's a comedic genius for managing to fit a joke like that into a situation as absurd as this! I'm sure she'll never have that opportunity ever again. Weird how that dog likes you so much. Usually he just likes girls. I guess it's because you look so much like a girl. Well, since I know you're not a girl, it's okay if I pat your chest, since I'm sure you don't have any boobs, like a girl. You're so damn cute, we just have to make you the school's new idol. You're so ridiculously pretty, it's almost like you're a girl. You know, usually when someone uses sarcasm, that's not an invitation for you to disprove their statement. After being brushed off by Sano, Mizuki meets Nakatsu Shuichi, a friendly, enthusiastic soccer player who takes a liking to her upfront behavior. He's basically supposed to be the third member of the main cast, but he doesn't really get to do a lot. Together, the two of them check what dorm Mizuki will be in, and as pure dumb luck would have it, she ends up assigned as Sano's roommate. You know, I really should have seen that coming. 
After learning this, Mizuki tries to get close to Sano again, only for him to tell her that he's actually quit the high jump. I don't know if the irony was supposed to be funny or not, but I sure as hell laughed. Sometime afterward, Mizuki and Nakatsu play a game of soccer, and he accidentally elbows her in the face and knocks her out. Oh, get out the way. Sano picks Mizuki up and takes her to the school infirmary. He accidentally feels her up and thus discovers that she's a girl, however he decides to keep the secret to himself. Once they reach the infirmary, Umeda, the school's doctor, assures Sano and Nakatsu that Mizuki's alright and they just need to let her get some rest. But then, once they leave, Umeda looms over Mizuki and makes a shocking inquiry. What's a girl like you doing at an all-boys school? Seriously? She's ending the first chapter on a cliffhanger? Are you really that desperate to end the first chapter on a cliffhanger? Who the hell does that? For no adequately explained reason, Sano returns to the infirmary in the next chapter, so Mizuki manages to avoid the confrontation. Brilliant thinking! I'll bet you Omeda is completely incapable of getting your ass expelled while he can't see you! Mizuki spends the rest of the chapter worried that she's going to be expelled, but she shows herself to be surprisingly determined to stay at the school. Yeah, Mizuki, you go, girl. You deserve to go to any high school you want to so that you can fulfill your stupid fangirl dream. Eventually, Mizuki confronts Umeda and tells him that she came to the school to be with Sano, and no matter what, she's not going to leave his side. Wow. Okay, let's give her a fighting chance. Let's put aside for a second that the reason that she said she wanted to go to the school was to be near a boy. It's still a boy's school, and she still has a vagina. But surprisingly, Umeda decides to actually leave Mizuki alone because her mind's made up and he won't be able to mess with her head. Yeah, he's a sick fuck like that, don't ask. Naturally, Mizuki's grateful, but she's curious about how he was able to discern her gender so quickly under her disguise. He's a doctor, he performed a checkup on her. Of course he's gonna be able to tell that she's a girl who's bound to have an in-depth knowledge of the human anatomy. Well, it's because I'm gay. Because he's gay. What does being gay have anything to do with being able to tell that? So somehow, despite two people discovering her secret in the first chapter, Mizuki manages to stay at the school and pass as an ordinary student for another hundred fucking forty chapters. Despite the overall slow pace of the series, a lot of stuff happens in the first few chapters, among them the sexual tension between Sano and Mizuki jumping off the charts. Not to mention, Nakatsu ends up developing a crush on Mizuki even while thinking that she's a boy. I can tell this because his view of her is framed with flowers. Thanks a lot for making it so obvious, Nakajo. And on top of that, Mizuki tries to help Sano get over the confidence issues that caused him to quit the high jump. This level of fangirlism is just stupid. Is Sano one of the Jonas Brothers or something? Mizuki gets Sano back to high jumping eventually, but I didn't find the return very interesting. I think that something as monotonous as high jumping can only be entertaining if it's surrounded by tension, which Nakajo does a very poor job of building up. So now we've got three major plot lines going here. Mizuki passing as a boy at the school, her developing relationship with Sano, and her helping Sano to get over the personal problems that caused him to quit the high jump in the first place. However, apparently Nakajo didn't think that that was enough. She had to throw in all of these subplots and side quests, basically. Unfortunately, we can't skip all of those because some of them are critical for understanding the tone of the story, but it would be really difficult to hit them all and it would also be very boring. So I'll try and hit on the very important ones, and the best way to do that is to go through the characters that become more prominent in those little stories. Let's go back to Omeda for a bit because he's a pretty interesting guy. He mostly provides comic relief, either being cold and snarky or creepy and flirtatious. However, he also serves as Mizuki's confidant and provides her with advice whenever she feels troubled. Umeda has a nephew named Namba Minami, who happens to be the RA of Mizuki and Sano's dorm. Namba is pretty much a Casanova. Unlike his uncle, he's straight as an arrow. For the most part, he serves as a senpai to the main cast, who are all a year younger than him. A senpai is basically a senior student. However, it's more important in Japan than it is in most other countries. You see, a senpai is expected to become a sort of mentor to their kohais, or juniors. Interestingly, the senpai kohai relationship goes beyond school after both students have graduated. There's one chapter dedicated to Namba that flashes back to a time before he was in high school, when he fell in love with his tutor. Unlike most guys' crushes on older women, but very much the standard for this series, she ends up returning his love. Eh. Well, I guess that's okay. I mean, in anime and manga, there are some weird relationships. I mean, I remember reading one time about a teacher and his grade school student. However, it wasn't really creepy because it was an arranged marriage and they didn't do anything. It was just that they were expected to get together once they were old enough and- Dude, they're taking their clothes off! Wait a minute! Whoa, 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 They have sex? 
He says that at this time he's 14 and that she's a second year university student, meaning that she's 19 or 20. Even in Japan, where there are all these weird age of consent laws that are different from over here in the U.S., that's statutory rape. It's not romantic, it's just creepy. I don't think that any of the relationships in this story are allowed to just be normal. But enough about that, let's move on to Namba's other quote-unquote love interest, Nakao Senri. Nakao's a weird case because he's a very effeminate boy and he also has a very serious crush on Namba, but he still doesn't identify himself as homosexual. This sort of acts as a foil to Nakatsu's crush on Mizuki. Once Nakatsu comes to terms with his feelings, he doesn't care whether or not they make him gay, and he's more open about them. Although later on, Nakao also becomes more open about his crush, and he even goes so far as to wish he'd been born a girl, retconning what had been an interesting nuance. Besides Nakao, Mizuki, Sano, and Nakatsu tend to also hang out with a few more students from their dorm, but the only really noteworthy one is Kayashima Taiki, Nakatsu's roommate. Kayashima is easily my favorite character in the series just because he's so abnormal in comparison to everyone else. For one thing, he generally has ESP, and he can actually see auras and spirits. But besides that, he has a really odd demeanor. Going hand in hand with his weird habits is a consistently very mellow mood. It's almost like he's fully aware of the tremendous amount of drama surrounding him and how ridiculous it is, yet he's able to just accept it without complaint. There's a cute little chapter where he meets a classmate's younger twin brothers and they take a liking to him just because he's so strange. It's a perfect representation of why he's so likable. Also, minor spoiler, Kayashima reveals at the end of the series that with his ability to sense auras, he knew that Mizuki was a girl the first time he saw her. He just didn't do anything about it because he didn't see it as his place to interfere. He's just cool like that. Alright, let's get back to Mizuki and Sana since of the three plot lines, their romance is probably the most important. Now, as any high school fiction writer knows, you can't just let their relationship develop on its own. That's too boring. You have to have 12 catalysts in a row to make sure that the love gets flowing. Warning, the following portion of the review is spoiler heavy. Get over it. The first major event occurs during summer break as Mizuki transferred near the end of the school year. The main cast gets summer jobs at the same place and one of the other employees ends up suspecting Mizuki is a girl. Alright, so we've got this CD guy here and he's pretty convinced that his male co-worker is actually a girl. What do you think he's gonna do about it? A. Keep it a secret, like Sano. B. Alert an authority figure of his discovery, like his boss or one of Mizuki's teachers. Or C. Bluff Mizuki into confirming his suspicion and then blackmail her with the information. While we're waiting for your answers to come in, let's check in with our resident creepologist, Gerardo. Gerardo, what do you think? Well, Nick, I think you're underestimating what this guy would do. Yeah, I raise shit. Actually, yes. He locks Mizuki in his car and tries to rape her for apparently no reason other than her being female. Which is kind of disturbing, really. Fortunately, although not surprisingly, Sano arrives in the nick of time and goes George McFly on the guy's ass. Once the rescue is complete, Mizuki faints in the heat of the moment and Sano kisses her. Is it cliche? Yes. Does she think that Sano kissing her was a dream? Yes. So things go back to normal. Up until the beginning of the second school year, when the school festival comes around. Part of the festival involves setting up themed attractions in each of the classrooms, and Mizuki's class decides to set up a maid cafe where they all dress as girls. Good god. I mean, I've seen guys dress up as cheerleaders for powder puff and that kind of thing, but this is an entire all-male classroom wearing dresses and makeup, and that guy has fake breasts. The worst part of it, though, happens when Mizuki ends up getting kidnapped. Again. To make sure that Mizuki doesn't rat them out later, the students who kidnap her decide to strip her naked and take blackmail pictures. Who the fuck thinks like this? This kid might tell on us and we might get suspended from school for a few days. I know, let's get him to shut up by committing a crime that could get us thrown in jail. And then in one of the most inappropriate comic relief scenes I have ever seen, she starts kicking them away so that they won't discover her gender. She's being sexually molested for the second time and she still cares about keeping her secret more than anything else. What is wrong with this girl? So Sana rescues Mizuki at the last second, again, and he almost kisses her in his relief. Wow. While this scene is cheesy as hell, I have to admit it's the last point in the series that I actually liked. From this point onwards, I was just really bored with it because it was the same thing over and over again. Up until this point in the manga, I actually kind of liked it, which had some rather odd side effects, which we're not going to talk about. Aw, oh, Candy, wasn't that amazing? He almost kissed her, it was so sweet. I wish he'd gone ahead and done it, then they could have lived happily ever after, Oh. 
possible. What, what am I doing? My God, this manga is changing me. I have to counter, effect, counter the effects. I've got to do something manly. Dude, could I am it? so sorry. What the fuck I did not. Doing? I didn't know I was gonna hit you that hard. I'm, I'm so sorry. Bullshit. I would run beyond that point now because everything after the first 20 chapters is the same thing. Armizuki and Sano going to confess to one another. And the most frustrating thing about it is that Sa is that Mizuki won't fucking wise up to the fact that Sano already knows that she's a girl. How ignorant is she? He accidentally walks in on her taking a shower. They sleep in the same bed like five times and he practically uses a pickup line on her. And once they even end up in a hot springs naked together and she trips and falls into him and yet she still doesn't suspect that he knows a thing. How can she still possibly think he doesn't know? Even underwater there are certain things you'll be able to feel. Hey Aldrin. Yeah? If we're both in a hot tub naked, would you be able to tell if I was a girl if I fell into you? Yeah. But wait, another ridiculous scenario comes along. Musiki school and a girls only school get together to hold a dance and since there are more boys at the one school than there are girls at the other, a few boys are asked to wear dresses and go to the dance as girls. Who thinks like this? Couldn't the guys just take turns dancing with the girls? Well, since Mizuki decides to be an idiot and volunteer to go as a girl, despite the fact that doing so would draw even more attention to her feminine build, she encounters a problem because the dress she has to wear won't cover up the vest she uses to hide her breasts. Well, how's she going to get around that? Well, don't worry, because all the guys going as girls are asked to wear a bra and fake breasts. At this point, I think that Nakajo is confused and she thinks that an all-boys school is like a prison or something. As if this situation wasn't weird enough already, one of the seniors from the girls' school thinks that Mizuki is a threat for her chance to become queen of the dance. Apparently, boys are allowed to win that title, but I don't know why they'd want to. So she starts giving Mizuki hell. Nakajo, will you just fucking make up your mind already? Make up your mind. Is Mizuki masculine enough that she can pass as a boy in an all-boys school, or is she so ridiculously pretty that she's going to win prom queen in a landslide? If you haven't figured out yet that Sano and Mizuki end up dancing together and winning best couple, you should go ahead and shoot yourself. God, if even a tenth of the flower imagery on this page had any meaning, then it will be enough to make Shakespeare jealous. The only good thing about this is that after 60 chapters of teasing, it's a little satisfying to get to see Insano and Mizuki act like a regular couple for a little while, and they don't get to do it again for another 70 chapters. Fortunately, I have no qualms about skipping the next 70 chapters just so that we can get to the next important point. The final build-up to the series' climax doesn't begin with the main cast, but rather with Nakao, who decides to finally confess his feelings to Nanba, who will be graduating soon, by getting Valentine's Day chocolates for him. Valentine's Day in Japan is interesting because it's supposed to be for girls to give chocolate to boys, specifically chocolate, specifically girls to boys. White Day, March 14th, one month later, is so that boys can return the favor to the girls who have given them chocolate. Nakao is completely open with Namba and tells him exactly how he feels for him. It comes as no surprise whatsoever when Namba is unable to return Nakao's feelings, but I admit that that didn't stop me from feeling sympathetic for the little guy. I like this turn of events because it teaches a very important lesson. Sometimes things just don't work out perfectly. But you know what? You just gotta go ahead sometimes and hope for the best. Even if things don't work out well, at least you tried. In terms of just the series continuity, Nakao's confession is important because it gives Mizuki the confidence to also get chocolate for Sano. This leads to a few more chapters of frustration as the two of them act awkward around each other, but eventually Sano works up the gust to declare that he's in love with her. Mizuki, however, doesn't confess in return because she finally decides to start feeling guilty about lying about her identity to Sano for, you know, a year. Sano finally just gets fed up with the whole thing, join the club, and kisses Mizuki, and the two hook up at last. Finally, now we can get out of this. Except that Mizuki still doesn't admit that she's a girl to Sano. The secret doesn't come out until an RA happens to see her changing, and despite this, it takes a while for anyone to try to get Mizuki expelled. It doesn't take long for Mizuki's friends to find out, but they're pretty understanding. The problem is that word of Mizuki's true gender ends up reaching pretty much the entire student population. Heavily pressured by the rumors, Mizuki finally chooses to resign from the school. All of her friends get together and hold a mock graduation ceremony in her honor and wish her goodbye and goody more flowers! Mizuki returns to America, but don't worry, Sana comes to visit her later, and they live happily ever after. 
This manga was just stupid. It wasn't really even bad, it just got dull after a while and it went on for way too long. It was a 145 chapter long tease. This is the problem with high school romance stories. They dangle the relationship in your face for forever and then when it finally comes to a head, it's completely unsatisfying. Now I know what you're thinking. It's been like 20 minutes and I don't know anything about Mizuki's personality other than her relation to Sano. Well that's because it's all there is to her. Besides that, she's just there to act cute, easily flustered, and hyper. At one point she even comes to the conclusion that it's okay if she doesn't know what to do beyond high school so long as she gets to be near Sano. And feminism marches on. Damn it, I've been trying not to say that the whole review. They say love conquers all, but maybe after reading this you'll think that's not such a good thing, because apparently love is a good enough reason to forget about your education or aspiring to having a career. <sighs> when it comes to life lessons, Ashia Mizuki is a terrible role model, and Nakajo Hisai is a terrible teacher. I'm Y Roller of Time. Until next time, forget what they taught you in school, always read right to left.